I know there are a number of wrestling fans, specifically hardcore wrestling fans, that don't particularly like the nostalgia acts in wrestling, specifically the ones the WWE will trot out there every year around WrestleMania season. You bring in somebody like The Rock or Sting or Goldberg, or you even want to talk about bringing in Taker every year. You know, you'll have those fans that sit there and say, I don't want to see these guys anymore. The past is the past, and I'd rather keep those memories in the past, and let's focus on the now and the future. And I get it, because you don't want to necessarily like confuse areas. I mean, there's a lot of things. It, there just are a lot of things. You get to where you're concerned about what if these guys aren't the same that they once were, because at some point in time, there's a diminishing return in terms of the skill and the ability and the performance level. And I get that. There's also the thought of, well, I haven't seen him for a long time. Now I know they're going, going, only going to be there for a short term. So how much am I really going to care when I kind of feel like I know how this is eventually going to play out? So why even bother? Then you also will sit there and feel like, hey, this guy comes in means that this guy down the chart a little bit might not get the same opportunity because this guy kind of knocked him out of place. And you kind of don't like that. And you kind of resent it. And you kind of like the way things are now or what they could be in the future. And you're looking ahead and you're like, hey, it's great to have these nostalgia acts and all, but that is literally only a short-term band-aid over a major bullet wound. What are you going to do in the future? It should be about the future, the future, the future. Kind of similar to sports sometimes, specifically the NFL and how much we focus on the NFL draft. And I get all of that. But there is significant value to be had in nostalgia acts, especially when those nostalgia acts are done well. Ultimately, regardless as a fan, if you look at it from this perspective or not, you don't have to look at it from this perspective at all. It's about money and making money. And the simple truth of the matter is, is that if this nostalgia act can make you more money, yes, even if it is short term, especially when you were a publicly traded entity like WWE, if this nostalgia act, a rock, a sting, a Goldberg, a taker, can make you more money than, let's say, a Seth Rollins or a Finn Balor or a Dean Ambrose or any other number of guys on the roster that are somewhat featured, then you'd be doing your business and the employees a disservice not utilizing those nostalgia acts. It's that simple. And incorporating those nostalgia acts can provide a little bit of a shot in the arm. It can give you some short-term interest that you didn't already have increased eyeballs on the product. So that way you could potentially get some different eyeballs, some more eyeballs on what you have going on now and what could be happening in the future. I refuse to see how that is a bad thing. Yes, you don't want them overdone. Yes, maybe some of the people that they've brought back over the years for nostalgia actually not particularly fond of and never were fond of, and I get that. But if you're going to tell me that you think The Rock shouldn't mean event of WrestleMania when he's arguably one of the biggest movie stars in the freaking world because you want somebody like Dolph Ziggler main eventing WrestleMania? Excuse me. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler! And screw you if you subscribe to that type of foolishness. That's ridiculous. And if you had that type of business mindset, I sure as hell wouldn't want you running any business of mine and most certainly not a damn wrestling company. And it's that simple. So Nostalgia X can carry tremendous value. You go back to Hogan in 2002 and so many other guys. And Shawn Michaels, when he came back later in 2002. Yeah, I know it, it wasn't a Nostalgia Act because he was back for so many years. Brock Lesnar, when he came back, I mean, there was some nostalgia there. Even though, again, he'd been with the company six plus years on his second run. But there is value there to those guys that have been gone a long time and then they come back. And if utilized well, you can make money with those guys. So I don't want a product full of nostalgia acts, but they've got a place. But part of the thing is, in order for something to be a nostalgia act, there either A, has to be enough reason for people to truly want to see it so damn bad, and or B, to whatever the hell you want to call it, 
They actually had to have not been there long enough to where it feels nostalgic, where it feels like something you've been waiting a long time for, and you're really, really happy to see it again. And the constant insistence on the WWE every time they get Roman Reigns in a certain spot to want to try and have a S.H.I.E.L.D. reunion is not a nostalgia act at all. It's played out, it's weak, and it's crap. And I see through the company's crap here. I mean, let's not even take away the fact that while a lot of you think the S.H.I.E.L.D. was some great and awesome faction, I'll say they were good. They had a decent run. They were good. And that faction ultimately produced three guys that have been bigger level players for the company the past few years. So when you measure a faction and its success, to me, you look at a couple of different things, what they did during the time they were together, and then what type of impact and meaning did it have for the future. Those are two big measuring sticks, along with the talent that was actually in that faction. You can make an argument that the Shield was a good to pretty good faction. I don't think they were all-time or legendary. I think that's people getting caught up in recency syndrome. That's people dismissing things that they might not be familiar with in the past. Because they didn't watch it, they didn't experience it. But based off of what they know, they feel like the Shield was great, awesome, and one of the best ever. Whatever. Different minds can have different opinions on this. But when you sit there and you constantly go back to this because you can't come up with anything new, when you constantly have to go back to something because what you're doing currently isn't working, when you have to continue to go back to something because you don't have enough creative bones in your offices to be able to find out what the hell to do with all these guys, that's not a nostalgia act at all. That's just the epitome of the WWE today, and that's pure, unadulterated, freaking laziness. Roman's the champ now. We want to continue to pretend like we don't care how the people react, even though we really do. So we want to once again try to force people to cheer him and react in a certain way. So now we're going to sit there and have his running buddies, his drinking buddies, the shield right there with him again. Again. It's hard for it to be a successful nostalgia act. If you don't allow enough time to go by without any actual nostalgia developing. And the only way nostalgia can develop is time. This company doesn't give it enough time to allow it to develop. And also, it loses its appeal and it diminishes the nostalgia when you go back to it multiple times. And even then, if you're not going to do anything interesting or compelling with it, it doesn't matter how many people short-term have fooled themselves into being excited about this, it's not going to work and it's going to be a gigantic waste of time and then it ultimately devalues the nostalgia of the Nostalgia Act where you could have went to it maybe a few years down the road. You know, like when you look at DX, you always think about it, why was it called DX? Maybe because most of the members in DX could only produce the X chromosome. Just a thought, praise God. But DX had their run for a few years. Then you take a break for a few years. Then it's Hunter and Sean back in, what, 2006, and they have a bit of a run with that. Then they take a couple of more years off from that. And then at the end of Sean's run, 09, 010, you bring it back. Another, you know, version of it, not nearly as good. But you did have three different versions. You know, two of them you could classify as nostalgia acts. But the thing was, is you didn't go back to it every six months or a damn year. You give it time. That's the way something becomes nostalgic. And you do other things with these individuals. This is like the WWE's, you know, kind of stopgap, always. Is when in doubt, we'll put the two guys with Roman, and they won't hate Roman as much for the time. Number one, I always say this, if you have to go to these lengths for the guy then maybe he's not the guy. Number two, maybe instead of trying to get him sympathy, you made him a badass, maybe you wouldn't have these types of issues. And number three, just in general, maybe, just maybe, if you were more creative, 
and you took more pride in and cared more about the way you developed and cultivated characters and stories and made sure your writing was on point, logical, sensical, and had purpose and meaning, you wouldn't have to sit there and trot out these half-assed wannabe nostalgia acts. This is so stupid. They're going to probably bring this damn thing back like five or six times over the years to the point when, when they do at some point, you literally will not care. And even now, like Braun's sitting there trying to cash in on Roman, he's kind of staring him down face to face, and out comes the freaking shield. What's likable about that? Ah, fuck this. Y'all can sit there and fantasize that the shield was so much better than it really was all the hell you want to. But I most certainly do not care about the shield reunion. I think it's cheap, lazy, borderline pathetic, and perfectly epitomizes the WWE and their laziness today. And that's why I'm the Schleg Daddy, and this is OTRS Central. Not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. Out of here.